And a Happy New Year to you guys. Uh, Mike here. And you're looking at uh, my little height gauge. This is a tool that I think that uh, everyone in a home shop should have. There's several different varieties of uh, height gauges. And this is what I call an old school one. I don't know what modern machine shops or tool shops are using today. I can't believe that they don't have their share of these things. So back in the day, uh, in a, uh, in the, well I should say the geographic region that I worked in, um, there was a, f a number of the height stand type height gauges and there was a few micro height gauges that uh, were personal tools of tool and die makers. But um, the, this style height gauge right here certainly was the gold standard and every tool and die maker had one and even a few machinists had their own. Uh, as far as the regular height stands, um, those were in the shops that I was familiar with in the Midwest. Um, those were uh, usually left out on the surface plates that provided by the company. But uh, these particular ones right here are very handy. You can use them on the um, granite plates or, or whatever kind of inspection plate you have. Uh, and, as well as you can use them on machine tools, uh, use them to transfer dimensions, use them for checked alignment and that sort of thing. So getting right into it, this is the way you'd see it in its stored position. Um, they're very compact and uh, easy for a tool and die maker to store in their toolboxes. And this one is collapsed down to its lowest profile. So when you got ready to use this, basically you lift the mast and then the, the jib drops down like so. And I've seen people uh, use these without a jib, but I like this little extension on mine. This, this particular swivel right here has uh, three different options for diameter rods to go in. This is a quarter inch rod. I've got the end of it turned down because uh, it, it's turned down to 7 30 seconds because uh, I have several federal indicators and uh, they're they're kind of my preferred indicator and that's what the swivel that comes from the factory is is 7 30 seconds so so now uh, this is the swivel that comes with my federal indicator and so there's a little dovetail clamp on one side I just slide that into the back of my indicator there's a dovetail on the on the bottom of my indicator as well as the end and I when I'm using it with my uh, height gauge I like to use the end clamping method so I clamp that up tight and slide it onto the turn down end right there. Tighten that up. And now you're ready to use it on the height gauge or on the <laughs> on the surface plate, excuse me. So it's just a matter of And now I like to uh, have my clamp set up to where the offset is, is minimized. In other words, uh, you can see on this first clamp on my height gauge, it's offset to the left. So then my little clamp for the indicator is offset to the right. So I usually set it up that way so that it's as close to the center line as I can get it. When, when you bought a height gauge, usually uh, they came with a scribe, and I'll show you what that looks like. And this particular one came with my height gauge, and it's got a, a hooked point on one end and a, just a straight with the other, and it goes in one of the one of the little holes. It fits just right, and uh, with the intention that you could use this as kind of a scriber 
I, I've never used this. I, I don't think you can put enough pressure on them to do a good job and there's a lot of other what I consider to be better methods to scribe lines on on your uh, work pieces. So I never used this. So when I <clears throat> laid out work pieces I probably 95 percent of the time my preferred method was using a, a square and a, uh, just a pocket scriber. Um, I always felt that worked really good. I used uh, my square and and scriber in conjunction with my scale, either my 6 inch flexible or um, I have a, a 12 inch flexible also. I uh, graduated in, uh, what was that, graduated in uh, eighths and sixteenths on one side and I think it was twentieths and one hundredths on the other side. That was my preferred scale. That always worked really good for me. This is the other style of uh, height stand. Um, I like this really well. It's got a really heavy base and uh, it, exclusively I just use this on the surface plate uh, but I like this real well because it has a digital reader on it and for the home shop that doesn't have a uh, uh, what I call a play check and I've heard people call them Cadillac gauges. Cadillac is the the, uh, the what would you say the the main kind or the most common kind of, uh, uh, well here, this is what that is, um, that you would find for uh, um, making height uh, readings uh, for inspection work. And uh, really, this is an old style one with the round, with the round uh, ledges on it. And um, I've seen them. Uh, other kinds too. In fact, I've seen Cadillac gauges that have, they're kind of like a split and you can take a, a top or bottom reading on the same, you know, ledges. This one, you can take readings on the top or you can take readings on the bottom and it's exactly, uh, if I remember it, it's exactly 200,000 so you can account uh, for the difference in the, in the reading. So, so this is, this is a good one for a uh, home shop because if you don't have a play check, um, you can use this. Uh, actually, um, you know, just set your zero and then, uh, you know, either off an edge or your first line and then, you know, go up with it until you get your reading and lock it down and make your, uh, make your uh, either indication or, or scribe or whatever you want to do with it. But this kind is really good. But I like this kind because it works either on an inspection plate or on a machine. Now, if you want to, to uh, put this jib, this jib and mast, that's what I call them, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, I don't know what you'd really call them, but uh, if, you, if you have to get right underneath something, this top post will kind of get in the way. So all you do there is you just lean this back and swivel this down, and now you can see, probably you can see that that you can get right underneath something and, and have clearance. So um, they're they're very very uh, very versatile, and the more you use them, the more they become just kind of like your right hand. I see this clamp is a little bit uh, could use some work, could use some oil. So I don't use it that much anymore, but uh, I'm not in the shop all that much anymore. It's not like every day. For 10 hours a day, like the old days. So, so that's that part of it. Uh, you can use them to some degree. You can use them to uh, to check squareness on a part. I, I I'll I'll get a uh, a block out here and and I'll show you how you would do that. So here's a quick example of a a check for squareness. Now in this this demonstration um, I'll be checking the squareness on the bottom of my one and a half, two and a half, three and a half block here and uh, all I would do is, is I would I would bring this up here set my zero check it and repeat there's my zero so then I'd turn it around like so and check my zero. 
Now this is telling me that I'm about uh, six tenths out, which really kind of surprises me, but uh, I haven't really cleaned the oil or anything off the bottom of it. But uh, So that's how you would do that. Now there is a V in the front of this that I think was intended to for you to put a dowel in and that way you could you could register that dowel right directly against uh, whatever it is that you want to uh, check squareness in this case um, I'm I'm really not going to use that I just I find this is just as good you know and so okay set my zero So once again, I just turn that around. And and there you go. So what I'm doing is I'm checking that for squareness. Now that's assuming uh, that these two sides are parallel. Now on a surface grinder, you know, um, if it's a ground surface, you can you can almost take that to bank with you that that, that these are parallel. Now one thing I should mention uh, this is very adjustable, so there's really only one really critical thing about these height gauges that uh, needs to be, and that's the flatness of the bottom of it. So if you, if you set your indicator point on uh, any surface and you do give it the tap test, you just kind of lightly tap your finger on the corners, like so, each four corner. You should see no movement in the needle whatsoever. Uh, any movement indicates that the bottom surface is not flat, and that's that's uh, absolutely a, a no-no. And if it is, if if it does jiggle, that's no big deal. You just put it on a lapping plate uh, and uh, and and lap it in until it is flat. I had to do that with this one when I first got it. It's a general. It's not a Starrett or a Brown and Sharp or one of the top names. So it wasn't perfect. It, it was uh, the bottom was a little bit out. So I just put it some lapping compound on a lapping plate and lapped it in until it was flat. And uh, and now there's no no rock in this at all. So uh, that's one thing to consider and, and uh, check for. The other feature on these are are these little slide pins, and they're just a slip fit in here, and uh, you can slide those down and use those to slide along an edge to check something for parallelism. So let's see, let me back the camera up and I'll show you. So what you do is you hang the tail end of this pipe gauge over the your edge you want and you can use it to uh, slide up and down that edge and you can see you could you could check something you could set something up parallel to this edge. So you can see this is a really a pretty simple tool and uh, I think it's it's really to some degree underappreciated. You can get you can get one of these on eBay for not very much money. Back in the day you know when you're coming up through the trade and you need something like this you know like you had to be a little careful you you know you couldn't spend too much money you take food right off the table from your family but you know certain things you have to have and and this is this is one of the th first things that I bought as an apprentice uh, this this is a general I know you can make these things or they're, they're pretty easy but uh, whether you make one or or buy one um, you know I think uh, I think you should uh, consider having one of these so I I love this. Uh, I love plate work, surface plate work, and um, you know I did a lot of it in my career. Um, I don't think job shops do as much of it as back in the day, but I can't see how they could they could do away with it completely. So, so you can see that uh, this is a pretty simple tool, but uh, I think it's underappreciated to a large degree. But uh, you might want to consider getting one. Uh, you, you might already have one. So that's pretty much a, a, my overview of, of a little height gauge. And uh, that's really 
about all there is to say about it, but it's, it's uh, totally a powerful tool to have. That's pretty much it. Until uh, next time, this is Mike signing out.